Welcome back to Earth's Living Odyssey as we further explore the tropical rainforest, a haven of extraordinary biodiversity and beauty. This episode invites us on a journey through the waterways and grasslands where capybaras, the gentle giants of the rodent world, roam in harmonious herds. Alongside them, we'll discover a variety of other remarkable species, from elusive jaguars and formidable caimans to a host of other unique denizens of this rich ecosystem. We'll explore the lush undergrowth and the banks of meandering rivers where the interplay of life in the rainforest unfolds. The dynamics of predator and prey, along with the coexistence of diverse species, shape the daily life of this vibrant habitat. Join us for a journey into the heart of the rainforest, where the stories of its inhabitants reflect the intricate and resilient nature of this environment. Welcome to Earth's Living Odyssey. Episode 5, The Tropical Rainforests, Part 2. As we delve into the vibrant underbrush of the tropical rainforest, our first encounter brings us face to face with a creature as fascinating as it is unique. Meet the capybara, a gentle giant whose presence is as integral to the rainforest as the flowing rivers and the whispering leaves. The capybara, a resident of South America's tropical rainforests, is the largest living rodent in the world. Adults can weigh between 35 to 66 kilograms and measure up to 1.2 meters or four feet in length. Their diet is exclusively herbivorous, consisting mainly of grasses, fruit and tree bark which they can digest efficiently thanks to a specialized stomach. This diet helps to regulate the growth of vegetation in their habitat. Capybaras have adapted well to their environment. Their webbed feet and water repellent fur make them skilled swimmers. Essential for escaping predators like jaguars and anacondas. They can stay submerged for up to five minutes at a time and are capable of sleeping in water, keeping their noses above the surface to breathe. Social dynamics are central to capybara life. They live in groups typically consisting of 10 to 20 individuals. But sometimes these groups can swell to over 100 during the dry season when they gather around limited water sources. Such large groups provide safety in numbers from predators. Capybaras exhibit a remarkable level of peaceful coexistence with other rainforest animals. They share their habitat with a wide range of species, from large predators to various bird species. Birds like the wattled jacana, or the cattle tyrant bird, are often seen perched on their backs where they pick off small pests and parasites. Reproduction and family structure are intriguing aspects of their life.
females give birth to litters of up to eight young after a gestation period of about 150 days. The young capybaras are precocial, meaning they are well developed at birth, able to eat grass within a week, though they continue to suckle for much longer. They have developed behaviours to cope with the varying conditions of the rainforest. During the heat of the day, they wallow in mud or water to keep cool. And in colder temperatures, they huddle together for warmth. Capybaras also impact their environment significantly. Their grazing habits help prevent overgrowth of vegetation and create pathways used by other smaller animals. From the gentle capybaras, we now turn our attention to the caiman, a key predator in the rainforest waterways. These reptiles are a crucial part of their ecosystem, balancing their roles as both predators and prey. Caimans, part of the alligator family, inhabit the slow-moving rivers and lakes of the rainforest. The spectacled caiman, known for the bony ridge between its eyes, is a common sight. These reptiles have adapted well to aquatic life, using their powerful tails for swimming. On land, they can move quickly in short bursts, necessary for capturing prey or escaping danger. Caimans are ectothermic, relying on external heat sources to regulate their body temperature, often seen basking in the sun or cooling off in the water. Caimans maintain ecological balance by preying on fish, birds and small mammals. Their hunting strategy, an ambush approach, leverages their patience and powerful bite. They communicate using a range of sounds, from hisses to bellows, particularly during mating season. Social behavior in caimans varies. Some are solitary, while others, like the spectacle caiman, form groups. Group dynamics are especially noticeable during the dry season when water sources are scarce, serving purposes beyond survival, such as mating and social hierarchy. Caiman nesting behaviour impacts the rainforest environment. Females build nests on riverbanks, affecting the structure of these areas. They lay up to 40 eggs, with the nest temperature influencing the offspring's sex. Hatchling caimans enter a world filled with challenges, vulnerable to predators despite their mother's protection. Their resilience during this vulnerable stage is remarkable. Caimans have a nuanced relationship with their ecosystem. Beyond hunting, they play a role in habitat creation. 
ponds formed by caimans during dry seasons become vital for other wildlife. Their sensory abilities, including excellent night vision and sensitivity to water pressure changes, aid in their nocturnal hunting activities. As we leave the solitary world of the Cayman, we encounter a contrasting character of the rainforest waterways, the giant otter. The giant otter, an animated and social mammal, offers a glimpse into the communal life within the rainforest's rivers and lakes. These creatures, the longest members of the weasel family can grow up to six feet in length, making them the largest otters in the world. Inhabiting the waterways of the rainforest, giant otters have evolved to be excellent swimmers. Their streamlined bodies and webbed feet enable them to navigate the rivers with remarkable agility. Unlike stealthy caimans, giant otters rely on speed and teamwork in the water. Group hunting allows them to effectively corral fish, their primary prey. Their diet also includes crabs, snakes, and occasionally small caimans. These otters live in cohesive family groups, often led by a dominant breeding pair. The group, typically consisting of up to eight individuals, works together in raising the young, hunting and defending their territory. Another aspect of their social life is the construction and maintenance of dens along riverbanks. These dens, or holts, are more than just shelters. They are central to the otter's family life, serving as nurseries for young pups and safe havens from predators. The giant otter, with its complex social structure and active role in the ecosystem, is a vibrant symbol of the interconnectedness of life in the rainforest. From the social and lively giant otters, our journey in the rainforest waterways leads us to one of the most infamous residents of these rivers, the prana. Known more for myth than fact, these creatures reveal another fascinating aspect of life in these biodiverse waters. Pranas, often surrounded by exaggerated tales of ferocity, are actually a diverse group of fish with over 60 different species. They inhabit various freshwater environments in the rainforest, from slow-moving rivers to the floodplains. Typically ranging in size from 5 to 10 inches, pranas are known for their sharp teeth and powerful jaws, adaptations that make them effective predators and scavengers in their habitats. Contrary to popular belief, pranas are not indiscriminate killers. Their diet mainly consists of fish, insects and crustaceans. The feeding behaviour of prana is often sensationalised, 
but their so-called feeding frenzies are relatively rare. These events usually occur when food is scarce, and a group of prana will converge on a single source of food. More commonly, they forage individually or in small groups. Interestingly, pranas use sounds produced by their swim bladders for communication. These sounds vary, indicating different behaviours such as alarm or aggression, and are a critical aspect of their social interactions, especially during the breeding season. During breeding, certain prana species exhibit behaviours such as territoriality and nest preparation that are crucial for their survival. Males often take an active role in this process, guarding the nesting sites where females lay their eggs. This level of parental investment, particularly by the males, is a significant aspect of their behaviour, often overlooked in common perceptions of these fish. In many indigenous cultures within the Amazon, pranas are respected both as a food source and as important parts of the river's ecosystem. Treading silently along the banks of piranha-infested waters, we encounter the jaguar. This majestic feline commands the terrestrial realm with an artful grace that sets it apart as the apex predator of its lush domain. The jaguar, Panthera onca, is the third largest big cat in the world surpassed only by the lion and tiger in size. In the dense foliage of the rainforest, the jaguar's distinctive coat, patterned with dark rosettes and spots, provides excellent camouflage. Unlike many of its feline counterparts, jaguars are comfortable in water. They often hunt along riverbanks, preying on fish, turtles and caimans. Despite their robust and muscular build, jaguars are not just brute force. They employ stealth and strategy in their hunting tactics, often ambushing their prey. Their diet is diverse, ranging from terrestrial mammals like deer and peccaries to reptiles and birds. The jaguar's jaw strength is remarkable, allowing it to deliver a fatal bite directly through the skull of its prey. Solitary by nature, jaguars mark their territories with scent markings. These territories can be vast, encompassing up to 50 square miles. Jaguars are secretive and often avoid human contact, making them challenging to study in the wild. In their reproductive habits, jaguars show a fascinating life cycle. Females, after a gestation of roughly 100 days, give birth to a litter, usually comprising two to four cubs. These cubs are born with their eyes closed and are entirely dependent on their mother for nourishment and protection. The mother jaguar teaches them to hunt and survive in the dense rainforest, a process that lasts for several years until the cubs are ready to establish territories of their own. 
Jaguars are less vocal than other big cats, but they do make a range of sounds for different purposes, including growls, roars and mews. Especially during mating season, or when asserting territorial dominance. Their genetic diversity is notable with jaguars exhibiting a wide range of coat colours and patterns. Among these variations, the most striking is the melanistic jaguar, commonly known as the black panther. This rare genetic trait results in a jaguar with a predominantly black coat though often the characteristic rosette patterns can still be seen in certain light. Jaguars are common in the folklore and mythology of many indigenous cultures across the Americas, where they are often revered as symbols of power and mystery. The House of the Eagles, a historical site once serving as a retreat for the elite jaguar warriors of Aztec society provides a glimpse into this deep cultural reverence. These warriors, drawing inspiration from the jaguar's strength and agility, were known for their unique battle attire. Adorned in jaguar skins and helmets shaped like the animal's head, they often also painted their faces to match the jaguar's distinct coat patterns, embodying the ferocity and grace of this majestic animal. Venturing beneath the dense canopy of the rainforest, we encounter the tapir a creature whose evolutionary history is as intriguing as its distinctive appearance. With their short prehensile snouts and sizable sturdy frames, tapirs echo a primeval lineage linking them to horses and rhinoceroses rather than the pigs they superficially resemble. The characteristic snout of tapirs is more than a curious feature. It's a highly adapted tool. Acting much like a shortened version of an elephant's trunk, this flexible appendage allows them to deftly browse the forest for leaves, fruits, twigs and aquatic plants. These robust animals, with their barrel-shaped bodies and relatively short necks, are well equipped for life in a variety of environments where rich vegetation provides both nourishment and cover. Adult tapirs are impressive in stature, typically weighing between 150 to 320 kilograms with a body length that can reach up to 2.5 meters. The protective bulk and thick-skinned hide they possess often deter smaller predators, though they remain vigilant of larger threats in their habitat. Tapirs inhabit not just rainforests, but also can be found in cloud forests and even marshy regions, seeking out ecosystems that offer abundant plant life. Their life cycle proceeds with a nurturing slow pace, mirrored by their lengthy gestation period, one of the longest among terrestrial mammals, lasting about 13 months. When born, calves are strikingly patterned with spots and stripes, a temporary camouflage that fades into the uniform coloration of adulthood as they grow. The social demeanour of tapirs is primarily solitary, save for the close bond forged between mother and calf 
and the seldom interactions of the mating season. In the forests of Central and South America, agoutis are a common sight. Their distinctive bodies are compact and strong, supported by slender limbs, while their short fur varies from shades of brown to reddish tones. Agoutis, typically weighing between two to four kilograms and reaching lengths of up to 60 centimeters, are equipped with sharp incisors. These teeth are adept at gnawing through tough seeds and nuts, making agoutis one of the few animals able to open hard-shelled fruits like those of the Brazil nut tree. Despite their small stature, agoutis are known for their agility and speed, aided by their long hind legs and short tails. These characteristics make them quick and elusive. Unlike many small mammals in their ecosystems, Agoutis are active primarily during the daytime. Agoutis have a distinct reproductive cycle. Females undergo a gestation period lasting approximately three to four months. The birth of typically one to three offspring at a time is an adaptation to their environment, balancing the need for parental care and survival. Newborn agoutis are relatively mature and mobile shortly after birth, a trait that sets them apart from many other small mammals. This early development is crucial for their quick integration into the forest. In the wild, Agoutis can live for up to 20 years. They face challenges from natural predators like ocelots and snakes, as well as from human activities. Their practice of burying seeds and nuts, known as scatter hoarding, is essential for seed germination and forest regeneration. As we delve deeper into the rainforest, we come across the armadillo, a model of nature's diversity and innovation. These armor-clad inhabitants excel in a subterranean lifestyle within the dense undergrowth and rich leaf litter of the Central and South American rainforests. The nine-banded armadillo a familiar species in this region, is particularly adapted for life in these environments. Armour composed of flexible bands affords protection and the necessary agility for their burrowing habits.
Equipped with sturdy claws, the armadillo is an adept digger, seeking out insects and larvae as its primary food source. Though insects dominate their diet, armadillos also consume fruits and seeds, showing a valuable dietary flexibility. Not merely foragers, these creatures employ their burrowing skills to construct extensive tunnel networks. These subterranean structures serve as homes, protective shelters and nurseries for their young. The reproductive process of the armadillo is remarkably efficient with females possessing the ability to delay the implantation of fertilized eggs, allowing the timing of birth to coincide with optimal conditions. Navigating their rainforest home, armadillos rely on acute senses of hearing and smell to compensate for their limited vision. These are critical for their nocturnal activities as they forage from dusk till dawn, avoiding the daytime heat. The armadillo's influence extends beyond individual survival. Their burrowing aerates the soil, promoting decomposition and assisting plant growth, thus indirectly enhancing the forest's biodiversity. The armadillo's primary defences are its armoured shell and rapid burrowing capability. Through the armadillo's diligent work, the germination of seeds and control of insect populations are subtly managed, affecting the variety and growth of numerous plant species. In times of drought, these mammals can locate and utilize water sources stored in their burrows, maintaining a level of hydration that is critical for survival. By following the soft rustling of the armadillo through the underbrush, we are granted a glimpse into the life of a creature that, although not often heralded, fulfills an indispensable role in the complexity of the rainforest. In the dense heart of the rainforest, where the play of life is endlessly intricate, iguanas are seen going about their business, unfazed by their prehistoric guise. The green iguana, with its distinctive hue, merges seamlessly into the leafy environment, perching on branches to absorb the dapples of sunlight that break through the canopy. As herbivores, these iguanas feed on a variety of leaves, blossoms and fruit, playing a vital role in regulating vegetation growth and enriching the soil through what they leave behind. The less conspicuous yellow iguana also navigates the forest with ease, 
its coloration a subtle nod to its surroundings. These reptiles are also primarily herbivorous, ensuring that the equilibrium of plant life is maintained, while at the same time dispersing seeds that foster new growth. The osteoderms that form their tough, bony skin protect them not only from the rough texture of the trees, but also from potential predators. These impermeable plates act as natural armour as the iguanas travel through the forest, from the roots to the canopy. Their sharp claws aid in their ascent, gripping the bark as they climb in search of sustenance or the warmth of the sun. When faced with danger, the iguana's tail becomes a formidable tool. It is strong enough to strike an effective blow and can detach if a predator manages to seize it. This self-amputation, known as autotomy, allows the iguana a chance to flee, its tail later regenerating to some extent. Iguanas use their highly developed vision to spot both delicacies and threats across the green expanse. They watch intently for the slightest hint of movement, ready to react swiftly, whether to catch a meal or to evade a threat. During mating periods, the males transform into dancers, performing a series of assertive head bobs and displaying their physical prowess to charm potential mates. The females, in time, lay their eggs in nurturing burrows from which the young will emerge wholly self-reliant. While iguanas are often solitary, they possess a language of gestures and postures. Simple head bobs, the extension of their dewlap for thermoregulation, and the occasional hiss all serve as deterrents to adversaries and as silent signals to one another. Though sturdy in appearance, these reptiles are well versed in the art of survival, using a blend of stillness and quick movements to navigate predator encounters. As ectotherms, they attune their daily patterns to the sun, basking to elevate their body temperature or seeking cooler shelter as needed. The life of the iguanas is finely entwined with that of the rainforest. Their routines contribute silently, but significantly, to the cycles of growth, decay and regeneration that define this tropical domain. Glimpsed through the dense foliage, a kaleidoscope of red, yellow and blue adorns the sky. This is the scarlet macaw. Their presence is unmistakable among the canopy.
Such arresting colours serve a critical purpose beyond their aesthetic appeal. They signal individual health and play a crucial role during courtship, when bright plumage can be a deciding factor in the selection of a mate. The scarlet macaw's feathers also assist in camouflage, cleverly blending in with the floral blooms and fruits of the rainforest when observed from below. These macaws are among the largest parrot species, their length allowing them an imposing presence as they navigate through the air with a powerful grace. A closer look reveals the intricate details of their adaptation to this verdant world. Their zygodactyl feet, with two toes facing forward and two backward, provide a formidable grip for perching and manipulating food. While their dexterous, scaly tongues, equipped with a bone inside, are adept at guiding fruit and nuts into their powerful beaks. Watching scarlet macaws in flight is to witness a choreographed display of agility. Their long pointed wings and streamlined tails cut through the air with surprising speed, often reaching 56 kilometers per hour. This agility extends to their acrobatic prowess amongst the branches, seeking out their diverse diet, which consists primarily of fruits, seeds and nuts, inadvertently aiding in forest propagation and regeneration. One cannot discuss the life of scarlet macaws without considering their lifelong bonds. They are monogamous creatures often forming pair bonds that are as steadfast as they are tender. The bonds between mates are reinforced through mutual preening and shared roosts, where they display an intimate familiarity that prevails throughout their years. The reproductive cycle of these birds is a meticulous process. After engaging in elaborate mating dances and gentle nuzzles, the female macaw will lay her eggs in the cavity of a tree, where both parents will alternately incubate them. Approximately five weeks later, the young macaws will hatch entering a world where their growth will be closely attended to by doting parents until they're ready to carve out their own path amidst the trees. Observers of the scarlet macaw will often find them in small flocks interacting with raucous calls that punctuate the forest soundscape. These calls, which can be heard from kilometers away, serve not only to communicate across the distance, but also to establish the macaw's territory amidst the dense treetops. Fascinatingly, these macaws frequently visit clay licks, sites where exposed riverbanks provide mineral-rich clay. As diurnal animals, 
the macaws have a routine that involves roosting at night in the deepest parts of the forest and emerging with the morning sun to bask in its warmth and to forage. Their finely tuned vision, capable of detecting both the full spectrum of visible and ultraviolet light, aids them in finding the ripest fruits and navigating the complex rainforest landscape. The interactions of scarlet macaws, both amongst themselves and with their environment, create a cascade of influence that echoes throughout the rainforest. In the fading light, the tropical rainforest breathes a symphony of sounds, a signal that our journey for now is drawing to a close. But our exploration here is far from over. These forests are full of stories waiting to be told. Join us next time on Earth's Living Odyssey as we venture deeper into the rainforest's embrace, where the air will resonate with the soulful calls of howler monkeys and the hornbill's bright plumage flashes against the vast green. The red-eyed tree frog awaits our discovery, a gem nestled in nature's cradle. And above, the flying foxes hang silently, waiting for the setting sun. We'll follow the powerful rhythm of the gorilla and enter the domain where the cassowary commands with ancient authority. And in the sheltering dusk, we will seek the elusive shadow of the Bengal tiger emblematic of the rainforest's silent struggle. Prepare for these encounters and more as we reveal the hidden wonders and unsung heroes of this lush realm in the Tropical Rainforests Part 3. Until then, may we all remain guardians of these living wonders.